All right, what is up, Speed Truth Sports? This is Bert. I'm joined once again by Tay. And today we are going over the AFC North and giving our predictions for this for the standings uh, for the teams within it. Uh, if you want to check out some of our other predictions and previews into other division, they're on our channel. Check them out. If you forgot somehow what teams are in the AFC North, we got the Steelers, we got the Bengals, we got the Ravens, we got the Browns. That's that's the lineup right there for the AFC North. So let me start. Let me kick it off. <laughs> go, go ahead, kick it off, Bert. Go ahead, kick it off. Man. Go ahead, my kick my it off. team is in here. My team is in here. So I'm picking the Baltimore Ravens to win this division. Projected win totals, I'm going to guess around 10 to 10 to 13 if they're really pushing it. I love this Ravens team, and they just flat out win, right? With with Lamar Jackson as their starter, they've only lost like seven games in the regular season, and two of them were to Patrick Mahomes. So yep. they got those two against the greatest quarterback in the NFL currently, maybe besides Tom Brady. Uh, but yeah, most talented quarterback in the NFL. Take out those two games, we've only lost like five games, right? That, that's ridiculous. Yeah. So here's my thing with with the Ravens is um, they got they still have an elite defense. Their pass rush has gotten better. They've drafted some rookies at that position. They've added Justin Houston, right, who's a veteran. They've got a great mix of veterans and young players. And actually, Ravens are one of the most well, Ravens are one of the youngest teams in the league, flat yeah. out. They they have made the most out of their draft picks. They developed them really really well. Uh, it's yeah, J.K. Dobbins got hurt. It sucks. That's gonna hurt the running game, but it's not gonna dismantle it. The no, schemes no, no. we got. The schemes we got on the run game, it's too it's too strong. It you could put any running back in there, and they look like a really solid starter, right? Yep. Our offense is the biggest question mark. Our defense, in my opinion, is gonna be totally fine. Yeah. We've got the we got in my opinion, we've got the best cornerback duo, Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey. I think it's the best cornerback duo in the league. And like I said, we got Calais Campbell on the line. Uh, we got uh, Odafe Owe, who he's gonna be a beast. He's gonna be a, he's yeah. gonna be a beast on the line. If yeah. not this year, then it, you know years to come. Next year, yeah, years to come for yep. sure. And on offense, they brought in some new receivers to help Lamar. They got Tylen Wallace. They got Rashad Bateman. They got Sammy Watkins. A lot of them are getting hurt. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> As, to start the season, right? No offense to your Raiders, but they last year they had one of the worst run defenses in the league, right? They were yeah. horrible against the run. What do the Ravens do? Great. They run the ball. So, the ball. you know, to, to start the year off, they're okay. They don't need them right now, you know. If they want to win the playoffs, they definitely need them to step up. But yeah. for right now, they're okay. They're cruising. It's not serious injuries. Little knock-ups here and there. And look, we have Lamar freaking Jackson. <laughs> All right? We are going to win games. I do not trust this Ravens team to not win games. I think they're going to be one of the most consistent uh, teams in this division. And that's saying something because the other two teams in this division that are gunning for first are really good. They are really good. I will give them that. Yeah. And it's crazy because all of us have great defenses, right? We all have great defenses. We all have really solid offenses. I think all of us are, except for the Steelers, are run-based. The Browns yeah. and the Ravens are both a, a run-first team. So it's going to be a heck of a season. It's going to – okay. The Ravens' schedule is a little it's, – it's definitely tougher than it's been in years past. Uh, but the make or break part of the schedule is right here. Hold on. Is weeks 12 through 14, in my opinion. Because they're seeing yeah. Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, back to back to back. That's going to be an insane stretch of games. And Cleveland's actually going on their bye week, I believe, in week 13, right? Yeah, week 13 is their bye week. So they see the Ravens, they go on bye, and then they see the Ravens again. That really sucks for the Ravens. But let's be real. I got to put a little arrogance in this video, bro. The Ravens low-key own the Browns. I'm just going to put it out there. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to put it out there, man. I, I got to. I got to rep my guys. Honestly, the Browns are probably the team I'm the most scared of besides ourselves to win the division. But we'll get into that in a little bit. Who do you, got, who do you have winning the division? 
I got the Browns, man. I do. I hate. I, I, I hate I, to I say. Respect. I got the. I got. I got the Browns. I respect it. I respect it. Um, my my thing is with the Browns. They got probably the best running back duo in the NFL. All yes. around the whole NFL, they have for Nick sure. Chubb and Kareem Hunt. That those two, those two both can rush for a thousand yards, honestly. Yeah. Which is crazy to think they got two guys that can rush for a thousand yards on the same roster. And at that, Kareem Hunt's able to come out of the backfield and go into a slot receiver and yeah. catch passes. Um, you have Jarvis Landry, you have Donovan Peoples Jones, you have Odell, um, you have Austin Hooper, you have David and Joku. Mm-hmm. They have a great team around them for what they love to do, which is run the ball and run play action off these off these heavy run drives. Uh, you said the defense is good. Pass first, they added to David McConnell. They have Miles Garrett. They have um, Jock, JOK, who a lot of teams pass up on, which I'm surprised he landed with the Browns, who already had a good defense. That was a steal. They had, the Browns had an amazing draft this past yeah. year. Yeah. Um, they have Denzel Ward. They have Greedy They have Greedy Williams. They have, um, and then they, ha- they just have, they have decent safety. John Johnson. They have pretty good safeties who were able to get the job done. Um, all around, I mean, this this team is built to make a playoff push and and possibly contend. I just don't think they're mature enough to make to make that Super Bowl run yet. But I think you give them you give them some time to develop and stick together. This this could be a Super Bowl contending team. They they have the pieces to do it. Um, I just I just yeah, it, it, it's hard, it's hard to go against this this the Nick Chubb. And and Kareem Hunt will because they just they just pound and pound and pound and they break teams down. They they, they really do and it's hard to go against it. Um, win wise, I, I I I give them I give them like nine to eleven. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're capable in that range, maybe twelve. Just depends on you know health and you know how how much of the momentum they grasp going on in the season. Something I'm a little worried about with the Browns is actually wait, let, let me let me jump back to the Ravens real quick. So, in my opinion, I think the biggest the two biggest things that are, are going to be pivotal to the Ravens success is their offensive line. If it can hold up during pass protection because they've been really bad at that in these past couple of years. Uh and also just snapping the ball correctly. Please really? love yeah. that. snap the ball correctly. And also the type of routes they run because the type of routes they ran last year were just disgusting. It, I mean, it was guys ending up in the same spot, like together, mm-hmm. and a bunch of defenders just bunched up around them. Like, how is Lamar supposed to make a throw like that? No quarterback can make a throw like that. I, yeah, I don't, honestly, nobody. not even Mahomes, right? Not even Brady. Nobody can do it. It's just, it's not like it's they had Mark impossible. Andrews going. On, they had Mark Andrews going on a, a little out route, but then they had Marquise Brown going up at the same time, and they just met, right? Like it was, it was a lot of plays like that where they just met defenders bunched up around them, and there's just absolutely nobody to throw to at that point. The, the routes that they ran last year were disgusting and they need to change that. Greg Roman needs to improve on that. And I think those two are the biggest two uh, factors for the Ravens offense succeeding. Now the Browns, something I'm concerned about with the Browns is that uh, I'm going to be honest, the stats, this is all just the stats speaking. Baker Mayfield's played better without Odell Beckham Jr. There. Yes. 100%. And it, it's been a narrative that Odell wants, he demands targets. But I mean, let's be let's look at the game that Odell got hurt in, right? Uh, I believe he was, I believe uh was a week seven against Cincinnati, I think. I think Baker it was something like that, yeah. Yeah, Baker Mayfield went uh, in that game 22 28 for 297 yards and five touchdowns. It, it's the Bengals, right? So yeah, of course you can do that. Uh but throughout the rest of the season, he had a he had a slightly bad stretch. Uh through week eight through eleven, but then twelve and on, he was fantastic. I mean, he was yeah, absolute killing it, lighting it up. And the reason for this, the reason for the success, in my opinion, is because he doesn't he doesn't feel pressured to throw the ball one way or the other. Yeah. He throws to whoever's open. If you're open, I'm giving you the ball. That's how the game should be played, honestly. And let's be real, Odell is a good wide receiver, but he's not good enough to demand. As many targets as he thinks he does. He's a he's right. he's a diva, man. I hate to say it, but Odell's a diva. He caused too many problems. It's the same problem as the Giants. Granted, there was nobody for the Giants, so they should have been throwing him the ball anyway. But <laughs> yeah. when you got people around you who are capable to do just what to do exactly what you can do, you can't demand the ball. Jarvis Landry is just as good as you. 
100%. Um, if not better. Donovan, if not yet, yeah, if not better. Um, Donovan People Jones, he's able to make these short catches and obviously make these uh these yak plays. He's capable to make these yak plays. He's a big, strong receiver. You can't deny him getting the ball when he has such size and he's able to make these short catches and get yards out there, or yards out the catch. So, like you said, um, if they can get Odell's head right and they can get him to not, you know, complain and whine and throw a big fit and ruin the team's morale by him not getting the ball, it's hard It's hard to bet against this team, honestly. It really is. Yeah. And like I said, that's the, that's the thing that concerns me the most. I'm not sure how – their offense is going to flow off the bat because look, they are, let's be real. They are a run first team. They should mm-hmm. be. They have Nick Chubb, one of the best running backs in the league, but with a run first team, that means less targets for their wide receivers. That means if a lot of it isn't going to Odell, Odell's not going to be happy because Odell feels like he's open every single time, right? Yes, a lot of, does. a lot of receivers feel like I'm open every single time. Get me the ball. But the difference is knowing that you got to see from your quarterback's perspective, Maybe yeah. it was a weird perspective where the defender kind of looked right in front of him. Maybe you weren't actually open and the defender was right there ready to hawk the ball away from you, right? It's stuff that like stuff like that you got to understand from the quarterback's perspective. He can't just throw you the ball every single time. No. Right? no Unless you are wide open every single time. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Even Tyreek Hill doesn't get the ball every the single ball time. Every single right? time. And he's, he's probably open every play. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And yeah, it, Odell's just got to, you know, if he locks in and focuses and he doesn't do what he did in the past where he punches a goal post and goes up and hits him back in the head and stuff like that, yeah. like that, that goofy stuff he was just doing back then. Like if he just matures his game, matures himself uh, in this, in this offense, they could be really, really special. Yeah. I'm just worried that it might not happen. And so yeah, that's kind of why sure, I have the Browns. I have actually have them as the same win range as the Ravens, but like one, one win less. So yeah. ten to twelve. Okay, that's my. And point. like I have, and I have, and I have, I got your boys in second. No yep. worries. Um, I think really and really, in my opinion, this one two is a toss up. Yeah, you can't sure. you can't go wrong with either or. Um, Baltimore, like you, you are, you broke it down all the way. They have a great team. There's no doubt about it. Lamar Jackson is probably the perfect quarterback for what you guys love to do, which is run the ball. You have yeah. a running quarterback. Who's able to run the ball with the ground and pound running backs you guys have? Um, and like you said, you guys finally got receivers. Tylen Wallace, uh, Bateman, Sammy Watkins, Marquise Brown's there, of course. Mark Andrews is there, of course. I mean, you guys have legitimate weapons that are able to get the job done. Yeah. But like you said, it's just a matter of what both teams is consistency, momentum, and health. That is a big thing for all three teams. And, and defenses for both teams. How good can de- both defenses stay and keep a grasp all season and not lose it and not lose their morale and lose their confidence and, and you know, kind of just keep that really aggressive, hard, hard-nosed, hard you know, ground, you know, physical defenses that both teams have. Yeah. And can, um, can they keep their locker room together as well? Yeah, exactly. Something else both about teams. Cleveland as well, um, a reason I kind of knocked them down a little bit, I don't think it's that big of an issue anymore, but I remember last year a, a big reason – why they eventually snuck into the playoffs was just because of the dis- um, a little bit of the disparity in their schedule where they did really bad against playoff level teams, but they did really good, good against, bad, against bad, teams. bad teams. Yeah. So it's not a bad thing to be good against bad teams. It is a bad thing to not be good against good teams though. You know, mm-hmm. you, they're doing their job in one end in terms of they're being the teams they're supposed to be. That's great. But can they consistently beat the teams that are supposed to be better than them or supposed yeah. to be on the same level as them, right? Can they 1, do that consistently? They they lost to Baltimore week 14, I believe, which was a, a playoff team on their level, gunning for a spot ahead of them, uh, which mm-hmm. they lost out on that spot uh, ahead of them. They, they, fell, they fell below. Uh, and then, but they, but they also saw Pittsburgh in the playoffs. So that could be a narrative that's just deconstructed this year because now they have that confidence from beating their divisional Pittsburgh, rival in yeah. the playoffs pretty handedly, right? 48, um, well, what, was, what was the score on that? I it think was, they did drop 40 points on them. It was like 40-something. I don't know. Yeah. I forgot the exact score of it. But, yeah, I mean, they they beat, I think it was 48 to 37, something like that. They beat them handedly. And they are what were really hype off that, and they could have beat the Chiefs 
uh, a game later. They had a legitimate chance to. Uh, honestly, I like Baker as a quarterback, which is tough for me to say because <laughs> I don't I don't want them to do good. But yeah. shoot, I mean, like I, honestly, I, I kind of like this Browns team. Like I'm I'm not I'm not even gonna lie. For me, it's just yeah. Are they gonna be consistent against good teams? And how are they gonna look with Odell? Because all, all their success last year came without Odell. Yeah, right? exactly. One thousand percent. And people are saying like, oh, they were so good last year. Now they're gonna get Odell it's not like it's not that seamless like it's not going to be a seamless transition for him right uh but let's jump to the third team in this division i feel like everyone's kind of putting putting them in third everyone's kind of going the ravens or cleveland first and second yeah but let's be real the steelers still have a good chance to to jump to first yeah one thousand one thousand percent um my i think my big thing with the steelers is that um you know they're 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 losing a lot in that secondary. I know they lost they lost Mike Hilton. Um, I know Joe Hayden is there. I know Minka's still there, but then they also lost the other guy on the other side of that pass rush that made it so good. But Bud Dupree, Dupree, yeah, who was we had a really we had a video. We had a video um, I think when we were talking about T.J. Watt, was he snubbed for Aaron Donald's uh, DPOI? We were talking about how Bud Dupree was seeing most of the double teams. It wasn't T.J. Watt. Yeah. And Bud Dupree, Which is a lot opened, of... yeah, he opened the door for T.J. Watt to succeed. So now, when T.J. Watt sees these double teams, is he still going to have the same or similar success? I exactly. Don't know. Um, but like, like, but like, we both think all three of these teams, great defenses. That's that is the main thing with them. All yeah. three teams have very physical, hard nosed, you know, electrifying defenses who are capable to make plays just like that. That can mm-hmm. tr- turn the point of the game. My thing is that. Pittsburgh offense is not as good as Baltimore and Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how I really feel about Big Ben. I think he's kind of it, it's it's over his time. I think they kind of need to you know start thinking about a new quarterback and finally getting this these new quarterbacks settled in. Um, their receiving core is very young, but it is it is and it's flashy. I think they just need to get more experience, more comfortable in the NFL. And just be more consistent. Um, Deontay Johnson shows flashes, but then he has games where he calls and catches two passes. Yeah. Chase Claypool has games where he scores three touchdowns and he has catches has a game where he doesn't catch the ball at all. Uh Juju. I, I, I don't know what to say about Juju at this point. I don't really know. He's kind of just he's he he's, he's let me ball. down. He catches the ball, but he doesn't go very far. Right? far. He's a very short route. Yeah. Run. And at that, he he just he he thinks he's living up to his wide receiver one. And honestly, he's not the number one guy on the team. And I think the problem is that he wants to be, and he wants to get paid like it. But they're like, listen, we got other guys that are capable to do more than you, who are capable to catch these short passes, but then are able to get yards at their catch. We're able to go deep and make these in big impact plays in the game. Claypool's a big body who's fast, quick, who's able to get down and beat safeties and corners over top and, and go for these long touchdowns. Uh, Deontay, Jackson, Deontay Johnson, a short, quick guy, deep threat, who they love to get the ball down the field. Um, and then even James Washington, he could really come in and take Juju's spot, and they could be fine with just perfectly fine without Juju. Um, and then they have, of course, the rookie Najee Harris. They have McFarlane in the backfield, of course. Uh, Benny Snell's there. Um, I think it's just they just need to move on, get a new quarterback, let the new quarterback, you know, fill in and uh, kind of guide this offense to where it, it needs to be with this new era of the team they have. But um, yeah, they're just not as electrifying as the other two teams with the Baltimore and Cleveland. Yeah, I totally agree. Their defense is fantastic. It's going to be stellar this year. Um, but the thing is, like in a division full of great defenses, you need something on offense that's gonna that's gonna click and that's gonna push you above the other teams, right? They have they're probably the best three wide receivers in the division. Uh, Deontay Johnson is really good at getting separation. Mm-hmm. Juju, he's he's kind of settled down a lot since he first blew up, but he's not horrible. I mean, he's a short route catch guy. They can just dump it off to him real quick, and he'll get a couple yeah. yards. Uh, and Chase Claypool, I mean, I think he's going to be fantastic this year. He's the red zone threat. He can jump up and grab it right over corners' heads. Um, he's, he's electrifying, right? Uh, the problem with the Steelers comes in a couple of different ways where – if you know 
they rely a lot on Ben Roethlisberger, and it's a lot yeah. to rely on like a thirty six, how thirty six, thirty seven year old. Thirty seven. He's 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 kind of like in the back end of his career too. At that, he's not really getting any yeah. better. He's just plateauing. He's kind of just staying the same. He's yeah. just he's good his, enough to get the job done. Yeah, and his arm isn't the same. Clearly, like no. we saw that last year. So what they were doing with their offense was that they were just having the ball out of his hands as quick as possible. Right? They were just all right. Throw it and then just let the guys go off. Throw it, let the guys go off. Najee Harris is going to help that. But at the same time, that kind of offense is the reason they lost to the Browns because they took advantage of that on defense. They're like, he's going to get it out immediately, so let's just kind of flood in the middle of the field right there. And then, mm-hmm. bam, like, they they made him hesitate. They made him look dif- a different ways. He threw a pick, right? So it, it, it's stuff like that where I don't, I'm not sure how much more creative they can be with their offense because of the limitations of Ben. And let's be real, he's very old, and if he gets hurt, they're done. They're done. Their offense it. is done because I don't trust um, – not Duck Hodges. Who's the Mason, uh, Mason? Mason Rudolph. Rudolph. I don't trust Mason Rudolph. I definitely do not trust Dwayne Haskins. <laughs> yeah. I don't care how many good games he has in preseason. I do not trust Dwayne Haskins anymore. Um, they're not going to take this team to the top of the division at all. Not in this division. No. You do not want Dwayne Haskins and Mason Rudolph throwing against the Ravens, throwing against the Browns. No. <laughs> Honestly, you might even worry about them throwing against the Bengals. Like, let's, <laughs> let's be real. And so... Another thing with, with the Steelers is that a lot of people are kind of looking at it last year. It was like, well, they, you know, they started off really, really strong. They were the top of the division. You know, they fell off a little bit. Like, you got to look at who they faced in the regular season, right? The yeah. Giants, Broncos, Texans. They had a bye week. Eagles, Browns, who hadn't hit their stride at all. Nope. The Titans, which was – uh, they <laughs> look, they won that game because Gostowski missed – a very wide open field, easy kick. Field goal. Right? Yeah. Yeah. A very wide open field goal. And those other games that I just mentioned, they barely won most of those yeah. games. Like they it, weren't blowing teams out. They were just winning based off because their defense is so good. Were, it's holding teams together. They were scraping by and the refs were helping a little bit. I'm gonna be real. <laughs> there were some really questionable calls that led to their wins in certain games. But I mean the list goes on. Dallas Cowboys, Cincinnati Bengals, Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, the Ravens, but the Ravens were hobbled. They had COVID issues during that week. Mm-hmm. So far and so forth. And then they finally faced a team that could limit their offense in the Washington football team, and they mm-hmm. kind of fell apart there. Yep. Then they saw the Bills again, and the Bills just outgun them. Outgun them. Bam. Yeah. Then they see the Bengals, which this this was the biggest. This was like the moment where everyone was just like, okay, the Steelers are done. Like, like yeah, they're, 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 they're so not as good as we all thought we were. Yeah. But what I'm saying is like, well, my point is that there were just a lot of it was a product of their schedule, a lot of their success. And I'm not saying that it's only because of their schedule, but a lot of it was because they were going against really bad teams. Like a lot, yeah. all those teams I named are, were horrible on defense, yeah. uh, except for the Ravens, right? And the Browns. Yeah. And let's just be honest, they have a much harder schedule this year. Yes, 1,000%. Uh, let me pull up the schedule real quick. So they're seeing New York, which, look, their defense is no slouch. They'll probably – oh, wait, wait. Whoops, this is – hold on. This is last year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me pull up this. Oh, they got the Bills off the bat. Yeah. I want to be real. That's probably an L. It'll probably be close, yeah, but it's going to be 1,000%. Uh, then they got Denver. Great defense there. And they're, and they're a sleeper team, in my opinion. That could be another L. Wait, wait. They too. I keep pulling up the last I keep pulling up last year's schedule. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. No, they do All start right. off with this Buffalo. Is... You're right. They start with Buffalo. Yeah. yeah, they start in Buffalo. Then they go to the Raiders. Which Gen C. But, and but, really they'll probably beat the Raiders. And they'll probably be yeah, Bengals they, and the Raiders. They, I have no problem. I have no problem in that they'll beat us. Yeah. But I think that they will struggle because their offense is just it, it, it's it's with Big Ben, like you said. Teams know they want to get the ball out of his hands quick. Okay, Gus Bradley is a great defensive coordinator. He's going to adjust. He's going to make the team adjust. He's going to force Big Ben to, you know, kind of want to go deep and test his arm, really, and see how good he really is. But uh, then they have Green Bay, Denver, Seattle, Cleveland, Chicago, Chargers. Then they see you guys. Then they see Minnesota, Tennessee, Kansas City, Cleveland, then you guys again. 
like you said, the schedule's significantly harder. They're not going to go on this huge 8-0 streak, 6-0 streak like they did last year. Yep. It's just not going to happen. It, they had, like you said, product of their schedule, and they were just scraping by. Scraping by because the defense was so good. Yep. And it just it won't be the same this year. And, yeah, like, like I said, and that was all with Big Ben healthy the entire year, right? If he gets hurt once, if he gets banged up, man, it's going to be really tough for this team. It, it's really I, really I hate to say it, one bad hit to that shoulder, he's yep. done, man. He's done. He's too old. His body's not healing the same way. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. And he's not, he's one of the most, he's one of the least mobile quarterbacks in the entire league. Yes, exactly. I don't think he scrambled out of the pocket like more than two times last year. <laughs> like, yeah, he doesn't scramble a lot. He doesn't. Like, he and only knows crazy. He does it in big life. games. Like, what? He does it in big games to save yeah. his team. That's it. You only see him scramble in the playoffs when, you know, they know they're not going to have a game next week. He'll scramble. Yeah. That's one thing. Big Ben is very gutsy. Everybody knows he's a, he's the ultimate competitor. Everybody knows this, but it's just, it's, Father Time is catching up, man. He's, yeah. he's getting old. He's just not the same anymore. But let's just say, for the sake of argument, right? Like, let's just say he's fully healthy for the for most of the season, right? Let's say maybe he gets knocked up here or there. Even if he just like misses a couple games, those are both probably gonna be L's with the mm-hmm. schedule they got. Unless he unless it's against like Detroit or uh, which maybe Dwayne Haskins could pull something out. I don't know. You know, and also something else is that. That bothers me is, is the line is still not great. The offensive line is not that great. Yeah. And no. that limits Najee Harris's rushing. And it also limits uh their offense once again because now they can't let deep plays develop. Yep. Which they, I mean, I guess they couldn't throw him in the first place because Ben's not he doesn't have an arm like that anymore. But yeah, they can't even let plays develop that long. So they have yeah. to get it out quickly again this year. So I, the offense, I think it's going to look similar to last year's, but with a touch of Najee Harris in there instead of catching short passes, instead of maybe Juju or Deontay. You know, it's it's going to be very interesting to see where this team goes. And I mean, I don't know. Uh, I see why everyone puts them third, and I agree. Yes, 1,000%. But you could also see them, if everything goes right, maybe taking they can. Right. Yeah, like, they could. It's possible. Like you said, like we talent. said, these three these three teams are very talented, very competitive, and they have great defenses that could easily push them. All three could be first in the division. Yeah. So it's it's really just a toss up, and it's just based on, you know, who we think is just has the 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 the, the more uh, like integrity, and has who has the really who really has a dog to just come in and take the division. Yeah. All right. Well, you want to go to the bang- to the Bengals? But let's let 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 let's just give a quick roundup about the Bengals. <laughs> the Bengals are the Bengals. They have Joe Burrow, they have Jamar Chase, they have Tyler Boyd, they have T. Higgins, they have great pieces. But they have no offensive line. Mm-hmm. Their coaching is not the best. Joe Mixon can't stay healthy. Uh their defense is not that great. It's just they don't have enough to compete in division with these three teams, let alone Joe Burrow gets hurt. This is going to be the same product last year. Not a lot of wins and a lot of losses. I hate to say it, but that's just the truth. Yeah. I mean, they've got nothing going on defense. They've got nothing going on their line. Uh, they made a huge mistake in drafting Jamar Chase. Not now, like, really looking back. Because we've also heard that Jamar Chase hasn't looked great in camp. He can't really get separation. And Joe Burrow's kind of hesitant to throw 50-50 balls to him. And this is, this is something that kind of makes me like, you know, I don't understand why teams draft quarterbacks and have like decent wide receivers or like good wide receivers and then go out and like try to get a wide receiver that their, their, their quarterback played with in college. Yeah. It's like, okay, that's a cool concept, but like they haven't played together in like a year or two years, most likely, unless they were drafted in the same draft. And even then... Mm -hmm. You're telling me your quarterback can't make chemistry with other players? Like Joe Burrow yeah, had amazing no chemistry with T. Higgins last year. They never played a, a single snap together. Single game together, right? It, it's just kind of, I don't, I don't see why that stopped them from taking a lineman, right? Yeah, I think Penesa was on the board and they just skipped him. Yeah, I mean, that, and everybody that was thought, ridiculous. and everybody thought, you know, easily they're going to take Penesa Well, They need somebody to protect Joe Burrow because he got lit up last year and he had that major injury which sat him out for the whole year I just you, you have to get somebody to protect this guy he is your franchise quarterback 
and he's not a bad franchise quarterback. He's very capable to do great things. Yeah. But when he doesn't have anybody to protect for him, what, he can't really do much. And like the the Bengals don't even have an indoor practice facility, so I mean, <laughs> I don't know. They're how much way they are very is. behind. They're very behind with the times. They're not very up to date with what everybody is doing in the NFL. I think they, they want to sell tickets more than they want to win. Yes, that's why they one thousand percent, one thousand percent. They want they the 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 market factor, it exploded. Everybody's like, "Ooh, Burrow and Chase, gonna be, it's just it's destined to be great." Well, you see Jamar Chase dropping passes in preseason, dropping passes in camp, not getting separation in camp. It's just uh, so there's a lot of issues there. You can see that he has rust from taking off from a year. Yeah. There's obvious rust there, and he has to get it back in the groove. Now, one thing. When he gets back in the groove, it's possible that they could take the top off with his offense because they have T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd as well. Yeah. Um, but like you said, it's all what ifs. There's no, no like uh, circumstance, like you cement. There's no guarantee for anything with this team. Yeah, unfortunately. And they've got just as tough of a schedule as everyone else in this division, and they're yep. gonna they're gonna flounder probably. I I, I kind of have their win totals around zero to three. Yeah, so. and at, and maybe four. They they might be able to push four, but that's like yeah. if Joe Burrow has like an amazing off the charts game, and their defense and Jesse Bates and I can't, they let go of William Jackson. I can't I can't even say William Jackson. He's in Washington now. If Jesse Bates, let alone like just motivates his defense to be any type of good, but like it's just, it's, it's hard to root for him. And also, I mean, Joe Burrow himself admitted, uh, he, he, like mentally. He's not like fully ready yet to come back from his injury, even though he's physically yeah, he's not. Physically fine. I feel like, yeah, like mentally that injury just really screwed him up because yeah, I feel he doesn't trust his offensive line anymore. I, don't, I wouldn't either, but no, like, not at all. Joe Burrow's not a, he's not a particularly mobile quarterback. He's not going to scramble so much out of the pocket like an Aaron Rodgers or like a Russell Wilson or something like that to really create space for himself. So he kind of needs that offensive line. He can do it. He can scream, but he's, it's not. That's not what his game is based off. Yeah, exactly. Not at all. And if he doesn't trust his line, it's gonna get ugly. And oh, I forgot to bring up something uh, about the Steelers. Juju in the locker room. <laughs> if they oh, start yeah, losing man. games, and he keeps posting TikToks and funny videos, and it's doing his all right his dancing and stuff, all the stuff like that. Yeah. It's his right to do it. It's his right to have fun. But, like, if you're a teammate in that locker room and you're serious about winning and you're on a losing streak and you're seeing your teammate Cut the like answers dancing, out. Right? If you – like, like you, you played sports, right? Yeah, of course. My whole life. Yeah. So, you know that after a loss, if anybody's singing or dancing or happy, no, everyone's looking at him like, come on, bro. We, we really just lost a game that we should have won. And they were losing games last year that they should have won. And he's out here making dancing videos and he's doing all this extra stuff. Just, just dial in, buckle it in. Let's regain focus. Let's have fun when we're winning. Not while we're on a loser streak. There's no point. For sure. And it caused trouble in the locker room last year because the coach had to sit everybody down and be like, like, look, no doing the stuff after the game. No dancing before the game on people's logos. That was just disrespectful. And yeah. no doing all this stuff. And look... It's Juju's right to have fun. It's his right to do what he wants. But you got to accept the consequences if you do what you want. That come with right? them. Exactly. Exactly. You can do whatever you can do whatever you want. You could go do some, uh, you could go uh, carjack somebody's car or something like that, right? But you got to deal with the consequences. Right? Exactly. You got it. Like, and, that's and, a very and, extreme. And, and Juju <laughs> definitely got the consequences last year with Von Bell. Von Bell gave him every, every consequence that every team wanted to give him. Von Bell delivered it and just gave everybody the satisfaction that they wanted to see. Yeah. Yeah, that and that's something that could really affect the Steelers as well. Mm -hmm. But Juju's on a one-year deal, so if that happens again, he's probably not going to come back. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? He's it's already started there. because he's already started posting it. He's already started yeah. posting Did I send that to you? Yeah. Uh, yes, I, I did. I think I did see that. Okay, I'll, I'll send it in the chat um, again. I'm not sure if I did. But yeah, he started making TikToks again in the locker rooms, and he's yeah, he's doing all this wild stuff. It's just yeah, it's too much. It's too it's too much for a team that is like very old school, 
and they're not with the, the you know the, all the antics. They're very old school. You know, we come in, get the job done, we leave. Mm -hmm. That's the Steelers. That's how we know the Steelers. Yeah. It's always been that way. It's never going to change. That's their culture. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just who they are. And like, you know, if they're winning, yeah, maybe they overlook it, right? Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah okay, whatever. Have have all your fun. Yeah, yeah. Go have your fun. But if they start losing, especially if they start losing back to back games, no, nobody's no. gonna have any of that. And Juju needs to Not read the room. He needs to read the room because he needs to realize that if he starts going in the locker room trying to make TikToks with Chase Claypool, people are gonna look at him like, "Come on, bro! Like, what are you doing?" Yeah, there's just no way. Like, yeah, get back, can't get be doing that. Get back in the film room and look at everything you dropped. Right, you look at every yeah. route run, out, route you ran, everything. And that's how it is at the 100%. highest level. You can't blame any of these yeah. guys for that, right? I that's, mean, how listen, they, that's how they got this there. This is this is this is the NFL. Yeah, you are in the NFL. Let's dial in. Let's lock it in. Let's get the job done first before we have fun. One thousand yeah. percent. Yeah, but hey, if you're winning, Juju, go ahead, do what you do, man. Whatever. Yeah, right, have I'm fun. Good. Have at it. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that, I, I think that does it for now. Um, this has been Speed True Sports, and uh, I've been Bert. Hey, appreciate you guys. We'll catch you guys next time. Uh, thank you so much. Goodbye.